everybody, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. It is well past my bedtime. But, anywho, quick update on the shooting range. I am still far from being done, and I uh, want to showcase a couple little things. Got the table here. We'll actually be using this table later. Yes, I moved the table. Oh no, i got to do lighting build. But, started making the kill house portion of it, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to work on the targets a little bit more and try to make some reactive targeting systems to go along with the existing targets that I've already got. So let's actually do a quick run through, and I'm going to do this in standalone. Um, yes, yeah, save selected, oh my god, I moved a table four inches. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Standalone's going to bring it up in a new window, so it'll simulate like I'm actually in it. So you can see, we still have the UE4 mannequin arm. I'm still trying to work up a good way of dealing with that. Um, got our tower. Like, hey, I can run over here and jump off the... Oh, no, I can't. I've put blocking volumes in on all four sides of the map to keep people from falling out until I figure out what I want to do with this section right here. So, first target, and I've changed the weapon sound. This one was just kind of a you know, fall-off target. Shoot it. Just kind of get a warm up. Then you got oh, slice the pie. Come on, slice the pie. Oh, there you go. And then you got uh, another one here. This has got the custom collision that I put on it. So if you zoom in, you can actually shoot through the car and hit your targets. And then of course come out of your scope mode. And then oh crap, got to jump over this. So you jump over that. I'll put something else uh, on the, the sides to kind of fill it in a little bit more. Oh, sneaky little ass. Okay. Come over here, and you've got a long-range target set, and you can zoom in. These are the bouncy targets, so you shoot them, they just wobble back and forth. Haven't um, put a um, hit decal on it just yet, and I'll probably do something with um, hit markers so that um, you can see that it's it's actually being hit. I got these guys. Oh, crap. Yep, exploding barrels. And I'll show how I do the exploding barrels on another one also. And since, you know, you're not going to sit here and have infinite ammo, and I'm going to slow down the rate of fire based on the weapon itself. It's like a bolt action would take even longer, that kind of stuff. So, one thing at a time, and what I was really wanting to, to talk about now is just more on the targets themselves. And the whole purpose of this is to set this up as the the training target, so you can actually come in here and it's like your basic training map. And we still got our binoculars. And no, I still haven't got rid of the um, the red cross here. I will get rid of it sooner or later. So, hit escape, and you see I was setting up something for a save game system here, where it would actually save your variables, and so when you get to the end of this map, it'll automatically save anyway, but you could save your game during, and it would actually allow you to, like say, if you're going through here and something comes up and you can't finish the game, you can do this, go to save game, and it remembers your locations and everything else. So the next time you come into the game, it'll actually then allow you to spawn in right here, exactly where you were before. And then you can continue shooting through the range and do your thing. So once you got all the way to the end, I'll set it up to where once you're there at the very end, you get a little spot like right here, and then, okay, you're done. It'll carry you back either to the main menu or go to the next map, either one. So let's go back to the main menu. And exit. So... Now, um, since I'm going to have an ammo system in here at some point anyway, I want to go ahead and set up a ammo res resupply and respawn system. So, foist off, I'm going to go to my ass ads assets, and I'm going to go to gadgets, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new blueprint, and I'm going to make it an actor, and we're going to call this ammo... PU, not because it stinks, it's because it's a pickup. 
And let's see. Um, with that, let's go ahead and open it. And then shove it behind over here. Let's go down to our Plagon Battle Royale and let's look for props or whatever we need for an ammo pickup. So we've got an ammo box, it's closed or open with a separate top on it. Um, that will probably do okay. For right now, I'm just going to set it as a walk over it and, and auto pick it up just because, you know. Once I set up the actual ammo system, I'll come back and I'll revise it. But I think we'll just go with this one for now. We'll do the ammo box, and we'll have to add lead separately. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to add a component of static mesh, and it's automatically going to give me the box. Ammo box. And I need to add another component, which is going to be the lid. And let's see if I can do it this way. Add component. And we'll just call this ammo box lid. So it's part of that. So now I just need to go ahead and attach it. And I'm going to uncheck my snapping just because I want it to look like it's actually on. Close enough. I'm going to turn my stamping back on. And then I'm going to add another component, which is going to be a box collision. I'm going to leave it completely named as box collision. Compile and save. Go on to my viewport, and let's actually raise that guy up. So we now have an actual box we can walk into and pick up. And I want to definitely look in here and I want to go to collision and set no collision. Same thing for lid. No collision. And then compost, I mean compile and save. And then we'll get in here and I'm just going to get rid of all of you guys. Compile and save one more time for good measure. Then we're going to go to our box collision. Right click. Add event on component begin overlap. And since we're just going to walk over it, it's going to automatically give us ammo. We're not going to get carried away with doing a check to see if we need it, if we don't need it, then whatever. We're not going to get into that for right now. This is just going to be a simple pickup system that's going to respawn. And we're going to make it even more, more cooler because we're going to do... Um, a rotating movement just because we're going to have a movement. Compile, save, and now from other actor, you're going to link this to your player character. In this case, I'm using the first person. So cast to first person character, and it's going to automatically link everything for you. And that's just we don't really need to do anything as first person character because we're not we don't have ammo yet we don't have a way of showing ammo and I will set that up and show that in another video whenever we get to setting ammo types ammo count things of that nature so we just want our our first person character when we walk over it we want it to to do something so when we overlap onto it what we want to do is since we want to, to show something, I'm just going to drag off from here and print text. And in this print text, we want, you just got some ammo sucker. Whatever. We just want it to, to do something. So it's just going to tell us, hey, you just got ammo. So... Now what we want to go ahead and do is get a reference to our ammo box. And we'll see if it incorporates the lid as well. We'll find out. Um, if not, then we'll just get a reference to that as well. And we'll end up using a reference to our box collision. So what we do here is we drag off from ammo box and set visibility. Leave everything unchecked. 
So we're turning off visibility of our ammo box. And then our reference for our box collision, what we're going to do here is deactivate. Throw that up there. And I'll quit being so OCD about distances and gaps. And we'll run a delay. And we'll just give this three seconds, whatever. Actually, let's make it five. So you can make this timer whatever you want for you know the how long it's gone. And then what we want to do here is essentially we're doing this one. And we'll grab this. Control C, Control V. So we'll paste those back in. Connect that up to here. So now what we want to do is check that box. So new visibility is true. And box collision, we want to activate. Connect that into there. So in theory, what's going to happen here is as soon as we overlap that box, we're going to get this text to pop up and we're going to make the box invisible and we're going to deactivate the collision box. Since there is no collision on the box itself, we don't have to turn that off. If you had collision on the item or you walk over and you want it to go away, then you could always set collision as enabled and you can also disable. You can set collision type, no collision or collision enabled. So you can activate and deactivate collisions that way as well. But since we have collisions turned off, we don't have to worry about it. So let's actually test it out and see if it works. Let's go to our gadgets so we can see the blueprint. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it in right here, nice and close. Go back to play and select a viewport. And you can see with the rotating movement, it's going to spin. You don't have to put that on there. I just thought it was cool. Okay, so the lid did not go away. So we'll, we'll add that in as well. So go back in here. Since we have a lid separately, I'll grab reference to the lid and throw that on there. And throw it in right here. And let's change our delay to 10 seconds, whatever. You can set it to be a minute, five minutes, three days, whoever, whatever you want. Now, whenever I come in here, hey, look, ammo box. Bink. You just got some ammo, sucker. Hey, Jesper. So now after our delay, it will then... Bum, bum, bum. Rip here. There you go. So it's back to normal state. So now I walk over it again, and you just got some ammo, sucker and it'll disappear and come back. So it's super, super, super stupid simple for setting up an ammo respawn system. You know, you can set it up to where whenever you pick it up, uh, instead of it saying you got some ammo sucker, you've already got your cast, your, your player character, and if your player character, let's go ahead and open up our character, and you've got a variable ammo and let's set that as an integer, compile and save. And let's say that we have 30 rounds of ammo to start off with. Lovely. So now we could actually, if we wanted to, instead of it saying you just got some ammo sucker, let's actually change that around a little bit and drag this off. Since we now have a variable that we can get, um, we can now get ammo and let's say that we want this ammo box to give us 30 rounds of ammo. Now there's another way you can do this to where it'll actually show up when you actually put the item in. So when you're actually, you actually click on the item in the world, you'll be able to go in here and find that amount and change the amount manually. So let's go in here. Um, we know we have 30 rounds of ammo. We're going to get our ammo and then we're going to do 
integer plus integer. We're going to say 30. So we get the ammo amount, we add 30 to it, and then we want to put that in there. So now it'll print in text what our current ammo count is. So now, if we try to click on it, it that variable's not there. If you guys want, I'll show how to do that later. But So let's actually go in here, we'll hit play. Hey, look at ammo box. See, it's the collision box is still active for some reason for showing us what our, our number is. So now I run over it again. We have 60. And it's not updating my number, not a updating my amount. Why are you not working? I said, why are you not working? So we wanted to do that, and then it's because that's right there. So let's actually, we're going to use the same system. We're going to do that, but let's go ahead and make it a little bit different. We're going to add a variable in, because variables make everything better. Picked, and it doesn't really matter on that. Um, we can call it um, visible, working, whatever. Uh, so at this point, we want to set visible to true there. And let's just drag off from here. Let's get a branch. And let's plug this in. If it's visible, then we can do all this. But at this point, let's also go ahead and since we just tripped over it, we need to go ahead and set visible is true. If it's visible, then we can proceed. If it's not visible, we cannot proceed. So maybe this will work. So we come over here. Hey, we'll grab that. And it's not working. Um, uncheck that. Check that. Check that. Compile. Save. Now it should be working in reverse. So there, we got 60 rounds of ammo now, and it should not be working, and it's not. Now whenever it pops back up again, there we go, and it's adding it to that, and it's not changing it. That's because we're just adding the number to it. Um, we need to set our ammo. And we'll just shove it in right here. So that's what we're doing. And we need to actually drag this into there. So now we're setting our ammo amount. So now it will actually increase the amount of ammo. So now I'm like, oh, look, ammo. Grab it. Now we have 60. And it's not working because it's not visible. And whenever it becomes visible again, we should be able to run over it. And it should give us 30 more rounds. And now we have 90. So there we go. That works. Lovely. Awesome. Questions? Didn't think so. All right. Moving along. Um, <laughs> exploding targets. On to some more fun shit. All right. Let's go to our gadgets folder. Let's go ahead and make a um, new blueprint class. Actor EXP for exploding tank and we'll just leave it at that and we'll go ahead and open close that close that now let's go ahead and pick out a prop for it 
So we want like a propane cylinder or something we can shoot because that's what the, the one we used before the exploding barrel. So let's find propane tank. That's lovely. Grab that one. Go here. Add component. Static mesh. And tank. So that's that. Compile and save. We're done. Okay, no, no, not yet. Um, let's go to our event graph. Get rid of all you guys. And here's the thing. I've already added this into my character, and I did not show it before. So what I did was nothing with the event begin play. On spawn projectile section, scroll through all this lovely stuff here. Keep on going. And I changed the sound there to the, the new sound for the rifle. Keep on going. Keep on going. Come on, a little bit more. On hit actor, I added in, well, first off, added in a sequence node here. And then what I did was from hit actor, I added apply damage. And all you have to do with that is right click and apply damage right there. And we already had a reference to our weapon damage, so I got that, and that weapon damage is like 500,000. I, I didn't make that number up, so, you know, I'm just, I went ahead and plugged that into the base damage, and that's it. Apply damage. That's all I'm doing is applying damage. So, the example of, in my gadgets, whenever I did the exploding barrel, all I did was, out of the event, any damage, and set health and we'll just go ahead and start doing this event any damage so when it takes damage it's not an overlapping event like you would think and then the exploding barrel we're gonna get from our damage level we need to actually go ahead and set a variable for our health and we're going to change that to a float. Compile and save. We're going to set our health to be whatever, 100. Because we're doing 500,000 damage, so it doesn't really matter anyway. And what we did was we got reference to our health. And we're subtracting the amount of damage. Why don't we leave that zero? Hmm. I'm subtracting the health from. Huh. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. I was just asking there if it was less than zero. Never mind. Duh. Being stupid. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll do um, float minus float. And we will get a reference to our health. We're subtracting the amount of damage from our health. And then what I want to do is, like I say, this is the same, same thing here. Damage here. We are subtracting the damage from our health. Howdy, howdy. I actually have these crossed over in the other one. So let's try that. Let's do damage here. and health here. So we're getting that effect. We're taking the our health, we're subtracting the amount of damage. And then <coughs> excuse me. Float. We're gonna see that it are we at equal to or less than this is my full time job. What are you talking about? Um Less than or equal to zero. Um, yeah, my full time job is sitting here doing tutorials, and yeah, I don't make any money from this. So I'm, I've been doing custom knives and everything else as well. Don't do a whole lot of freelance work because I've been trying to actually get my own project going and trying to get my team motivated to actually do that. So I actually am looking for people who can help out with projects. So, I mean, I don't mind doing some side commission work as long as it doesn't get too much away from my actual daily stuff. 
So event any damage during health, check and see if it's zero. If it is less than zero, and we're going to do the same thing here as I'm spawning an emitter and a sound and I'm destroying the actor. And all I'm going to do now is spawn emitter. Now I had a little bit of an issue with the actual emitter that I'm using. And the emitter I'm using is FX Explosion. And I'll have to um, big thank you to Cedraco, one of my guys here on my team, um, for pointing out something that that was kicking my butt trying to figure out how to do it. And it was, again, something simple. But then again, for as many times I've shown him how to do something that he didn't know how to do that was super simple, it kind of works back and forth. Um, so we want to get our location. It's about get world location here. Plug this guy in to the location. We're using that template there. And then want to go ahead and do play sound at location and I don't have an explosion sound so all I'm doing for the sound is I'm using uh, the gunshot sound using the same location here and that's that and we need to destroy actor keep that self-reference that's gonna be good and that should be everything here Yep, that's everything. So let's actually give that a shot. <laughs> shot, get it? Oh, never mind. Anyway, um, <laughs> grab the propane tank. Let's set that in the map. And let's put a couple of them in there just because I like blowing stuff up. And who doesn't? I'm going to end up deleting those temporarily You know, once I get more going on my map. So save all, save selected. And let's hit play. Jump over the ledge. Yes, I know I could go in there and hit select play from here, but then I wouldn't be able to sit there and do this. I'm sorry, I just like those little springy targets that I made. Cool, huh? I still haven't deactivated that stupid little red cross here in the center. I will. I keep saying I will, and I just keep forgetting about it. Doing other stuff. So that's the exploding targets. That's the ammo pickup system. Um, where we can actually keep picking it up, and it'll respawn after a couple seconds. And it doesn't work unless it's actually there and doing some fail-safe stuff on it. Um... <laughs> And I didn't shoot these guys. Like I said, this has got my custom collision on it, so you can actually shoot through the car. And I showed you guys how to do that, right? Um, I did, and it was in another video. This is actually just... Um, and I'll do it one more time, just in case you guys didn't catch it before. I'm going to grab... Vehicles. And I'm going to grab... I guess it doesn't really matter which one I grab. I'm going to grab this taxi cab right here. And let's spin it around. And I want to be able to shoot through the car. And the thing is, is this works fine. It's a short term thing. Let's go ahead and grab a target. Let's grab target one. Throw it behind this window here. That's fine. Um, you know what? Since one target's never enough, let's put two. And if we hit play, I'll skip by everything else here. Fall down. Get out of the way. Yes, I know. I can right-click on the map and play from here. So if I try to zoom in and shoot through the car, can't do it. But I can shoot over the top. I want to shoot through the car, but then if I can shoot through the car, that means I can't walk through the car. I can walk straight through it because the way you got to do it is select a vehicle and interesting um, collision. Where the hell are you? 
um, on collision here no collision now you could try doing like all these are like black all dynamic and that kind of stuff but it's gonna run on no collision so now sorry he was in my way I promise next time I'll just play from here so now I can look at it I can shoot through the car no problem but I could also walk through the car we don't want to walk through the car that's no bueno so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a blocking volume set that into the map but it's not quite the shape of the car it's just a big ass square well let's actually fix that go to geometry editing right there and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to click on this face and I'm going to select extrude and it loves to give a little error message right there but ignore it so we've just extruded it there and that's fine we're just close we don't have to be perfect just yet grab this one and extrude it here and what the heck let's grab the top one and let's go ahead and extrude that up as well so there we've just taken that one box collision or that that one box and we've just stretched it out a little bit here so now what I want to do is I'm gonna select this point this one this one and this one I'm grabbing the actual points and I'm hitting control and left click and I'm just going to try to make that roughly the size of the rooftop. Actually, you know, let's keep it straight. Bring it down to about here. About even with the top of the hood. Because we can always just come back in here, grab this point, this one, this one, and this one and just move this back so it's at the base of the windshield right here then we can grab these two right here drag it down let's move it back a little bit too so we'll get close we don't have to be absolutely perfect So we just want to try to match it up with the um, the top and front of the windshield and the roof of the car. And then we'll grab this guy and you know just sit there and, and make it as good or as rough as you want it to be. It's entirely up to you because you, you have to imagine it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just blocking the player from being able to fall through into the model. So I'll grab this guy, this guy, this one, and this one. And I'm going to move that one to... Eh. About there. Grab those two points. And you could do this with BSP geometries. This just happens to be a collision or a blocking volume it's going to act as a collision box so if you've got a model that has a broken collision not that any of the Cinti Studios assets would ever have um, you know <coughs> collision issues <coughs> I love these Cinti Studios assets but I love picking on them especially if they forget one collision or something like that so we'll just grab those two points we're almost done I promise it's about as much fun as watching grass grow So that's close enough, and we can take the sides if we want to, and grab that point, that point, and then you get as as technically perfect or unperfect as you want. You're the master of your own destiny. You can, but 
this is just a blocking volume. I'm not trying to remake a collision system for the entire vehicle. I'm just actually trying to make a blocking volume just to keep the player from being able to step into the vehicle so that I can actually have the actual vehicle's collision set to none. That's good enough. I, I don't need to worry about being absolutely precise. So, as advertised, I'm going to right click on the map and play from here so I can actually just spawn right there. So now I can shoot through the vehicle. But I walk over here, I can actually climb on top of the vehicle, climb onto the roof, and do my whole thing. So it stops me from being able to go through it, but it doesn't stop bullets. But as you can see, that target moved. So I can actually do it again. Right click, play from here. So I'm going to scroll in. We can see that this is perfect shot on my target. I'm going to aim right there. Shot through the car, not just through the glass. You know, you could also apply damage to this. But I wasn't worried about it. I'm not going to set these up to where they could actually hit and damage the player. You could set up um, all kind of stuff for your targets. Yeah, the only, only reason that I chose to do this way, like I said, it's just a, a blocking volume so that I can actually get through here. And let's close props, close that. And that's this one. I'm going to actually, I'm not even going to keep it. So delete you, delete you, delete you, and you. So in one of the next videos I'm going to do on this, I'm actually going to take um, target two. It's the same thing as the regular targets. But what I'm going to do is convert it into a um, destructible mesh. Um, the, one of the first steps you're going to have to do on destructible meshes is you're going to have to go into your plugins. And there's one particular plugin that you have to enable, and that's um, Apex Destruction. And once you enable it, you got to restart the project and all that stuff. But then you have the ability to convert a static mesh into a destructible mesh. And that lets you then, you know, once you apply damage to it, it'll actually do that. Let's go ahead and save all, save selected, lighting only build. If you want to, I mean, so I try to keep these, these videos no more than an hour at a time. We're only at 38 minutes, although it is 5 o'clock in the morning. So I could go ahead and turn that on. Let's finish this lighting build real quick. Because I'm goofy about that. Alright, come on. Come on. Thank you. And let's do a save all. So with that, like I said, go to your plugins. And type in Apex. Enable restart now. So now you have to do a restart because it's got to reload the new plugin and it'll work from there. And then it'll allow you to take a static mesh and turn it into a destructible mesh. So this won't take me just a moment to get back into the project here. Well that's doing that. Um, let's talk about some of my knife stuff. There's um the prototypes, this one, just made to be, I know I could zoom out on my camera, but it's nice and, and comfortable, small. Yes, they're made out of wood, but, you know, that's the thing is you use wood and lattice scraps and actually test out the, the shape of the blades. So I did that with wood. And this one was just, I know it's, it's dark in here, the Tanto blade, and it was just painted green so that I could have a recess there for my thumb. But as a unique fighting style, turning the knife around this way allows me to actually have a thumb indent right here so that I can actually apply force to jab down on it. So just playing around with different um, styles. 
in wood before I actually commit it to metal. Alright, so that's actually enabled, so I can actually come in here and I've already got a mesh folder, so I'm good to go. Go to my meshes, props, find my target, and I'm going to right click on it now and I'm going to create destructible mesh. And there's our target. And fracture mesh. And you can blow it apart. So let's save and close. And now I'm going to take that destructible mesh. So I don't want to get mixed up with the rest of these uh, Cindy assets. I'm going to move that to my mesh folder. So there's a lot of settings you can actually put in here that you're going to have to go through. I'm not going to actually do any of that just yet. Um, I go into my gadgets, go to target 2, and I'm actually going to look at my viewport. I don't really need any of this stuff anymore on this one. I was doing something totally different. Actually, yeah, I'm not going to mess with that for right now. Um, compile and save. That was just getting the actual location. Viewport. Let's actually get rid of that mesh. And let's go to my meshes. Select my destructible mesh. Add component. And there we go. It's got DM on the end of the name, so I know it's my destructible mesh. So, first off, let's go ahead and go into my gadget folder. And let's go back to my... this range one. You know what? We don't need to go to the range. We can just go to the test map. Instead of having to worry about going all throughout everything, trying to get to it, we'll just go to the test map and... Oh, that's right. We had some other little miscellaneous stuff already in here. Um, gadget. We'll throw you out there for the hell of it. You right there for the hell of it. You for the hell of it. This is target one. This was the original one that just falls over for now. Target two we're going to put over here on the other side. So now if we hit play... Well, shit, we killed everything. Um, first person game mode. Go away, go away, nobody wants you. So, you can set up the amount of damage that this thing will take. See, there's no collision on it for one. So let's actually go in here. and block all. That might be helpful. So we'll look at the settings. Go away. And target two. The destructible mesh itself we need to set up in here. Damage threshold. Damage spread, enable impact damage. Yeah, whatever, we can try that as well. I could add much to that. Um, random seed. And this is your slider scale. We need to set up the default impact damage depth. There we go. It's not the way I would want to do it, but you know what? We can actually make it work to where whenever we hit it, it just explodes and falls apart. Um, chunk parameters. You can actually save 
uh, and do your own custom FBX based chunks so that if you want just this part right here to just fall straight down or, or fall apart or crack or what have you, you could do it that way as well. Um, damage threshold. Amount of damage which will cause a chunk to fracture, which is set to 1, which we're doing 500,000 damage. Um, how easily the damage spreads. We don't need custom impact resistance. Um, we'll actually spend some time on setting up the uh, parameters on it. But we've got the basics for it right there for it to actually, once we hit it, so we're actually uh, forgetting something too here. Um, and it should. Let's actually put the. Um, the actual thing in here. If we put it in here in a blueprint, it might actually be acting a little bit different. Now, we gotta tell it to be able to take damage. Oh, details. Damn it. You can tell it's like really, really late. Fracture effects, two elements, large trunk, um, semi physics, eh, whatever. And it's already set as destructible. And first, remember, it needs to be a movable item as well, but. Really, that was lovely. You may not have seen what happened just then, but I don't have the weight set on it. Simulate physics, um, linear dampening. I'll turn off simulate physics. Because um, just like we had with the uh, the other targets, when we set them out there, I had to increase the weight incrementally to a really large amount. Those are kind of boring. Well, I'll actually fix those and set those up in, in another video. So I wasn't planning on doing destructible meshes in this video. Um, because I'm not that great with it. So that was this one here. And the way we did the other ones in the other video, just really quickly, was... Um, doing a very simple system for... Um, physics constraints. So we'll set just a, a basic item into the map here, and it doesn't matter what the actual item. I'm just going to have something for it to anchor to. And we're going to do this is um, we're going to go ahead and grab. It doesn't matter. This is a mesh is a mesh is a mesh for right now. Set that in the map, and we're going to go ahead and for now we're going to leave it a little bit elevated. We just want it to be on the platform. We can actually get this and copy the location, select the target, paste the location. So we're dead on. I just want to go ahead and elevate it a little bit. And let's add a physics constraint actor. Drop it right here on the map. Paste the location elevated a little bit. What we're doing with this before was we had this object was below the ground. This right here was linked to both of them. We're going to link it to the base plate for actor 1 and the target itself for actor 2. And then we'll take the uh, physics constraint, lower it down, and lower the target down. Let's actually bring that down one no, nope, that should be good. Bring this down to where it looks like it's sitting on the actual platform. And then we need to go ahead and enable... We're going to take it from destruction to... Block all. It doesn't really matter. You know what? We probably need to go ahead and use just a regular static mesh. Because that one's not going to let me do it. 
props. Grab a target. Again, location, paste, rotation. And it's close enough. We'll get our physics constraint. And it's like that target. I want this target to simulate physics, set our mass, and we're going to set our mass to 1500. If we hit play, because we didn't give it enough room for the physics constraint and the base to let it completely fall over, it'll just sit there and spring back and forth. It's like this right here. There's nothing that's preventing it from just wrapping around. It's just nice to have a little reactive target. So we can see that it's moving. You know, if you change the position of the um, that actual physics constraint, it'll react totally different. Because you, if you look at this one right here, the physics constraint is right there. I'll take it and I'll lower it down to right there. Get out of my damn way. <laughs> See, it behaves totally different now. We'll grab that physics constraint. No, physics constraint. Yeah, that's it. And I put it like right there. Just change the way that it behaves. Thought that was kind of cool. What can you use that for? Besides that kind of stuff or this kind of stuff. You can actually set it up to where... Now one of the things I did on another... We'll make this quick. Is find anything like a flat piece or um, a pallet. That's lovely. And just because I don't feel like getting super crazy with coordinates. All right, zero, zero, zero. You get out the damn way. We're going to take this and we're going to elevate it off the ground a little bit. 70, that's good enough. And let's grab a physics constraint actor and we'll put it at. And we'll try a couple different locations here. Um, but we'll just get it there for now. And Cube is just a good reference point for getting our position. So what I want to do is set it up to where this physics constraint, the base is here. The pivoting actor is going to be here. And now let's put that down and hit play. Now I didn't turn on the, the physics to it. So what you want is something that's going to actually move whenever you're, you're standing on it. Yes, yes, warnings, shut up. I know what I did. Let's um, simulate physics. Set the weight to, I don't know, let's try heavy, 5,000 pounds. Well, a little bit too much. Let me find our physics constraint. You don't want it to be too much movement there. So whenever you, you're trying to actually step on something, you get on it, and as you apply different physics, it'll actually move. 
So let's actually take the thing here, drop it down to below the ground level. If you hit it, it's actually going to teeter over. So if we actually take that physics constraint actor, let's move it up a little bit more. Or we can move it down. Play around with it, you know. That's the cool thing about it is if you don't know about something, play with it. Experiment. What I actually did was I created a um, physics constraint actor and the rope thing like this over here to where it actually a swinging platform. Let's actually delete that, delete that, let's pop to the ground, delete that cube. All right. And let's go ahead and save all. That's all we're going to do with this one for the night. I'm going to close this guy out. I'll load that other project really quickly to see if, uh, if I can even remember which one it was. I have way too many projects. Hell, I don't even know which one it is. So, you know, I'll try one or two really quickly. And if I don't get it on the second try, then the heck with it. Yeah, you can play around with the physics constraints and things like that. Pick something, play with it. And let's try... Don't restore. Oh, this was the, um, the experiment with um, checkpoint systems. Nothing there. Not sure what I was doing here. It's creating custom static meshes. All right. That was definitely not the right project. What happens when you have too many projects? And this is just the ones that are not already archived. Hmm. That's the one we're just working on, the FPS series. Um, this is what we did the other day on the stream for setting up the scope and the binoculars. And... Yeah, not so much worried about it. And for those of you who were, they were doing the war card game, if you haven't already checked out my version of it that I've uploaded, then um, you know to kind of get an idea of what we were doing, I'll let you load this one really quickly and quickly glance through that. Um, essentially, what I was doing with that particular project was setting it up to where it showed how to get certain variables. Got some sounds in here, and let's hit play. Got some music. Wanted to get specific things like how many draws, how many wins, losses, how many total plays. Um, you hit deal. Player wins, you get a sound. You get another sound whenever you lose. And when you get a draw, you get a different sound. So, even though the sounds are terrible and that kind of stuff, you see we had five plays, I had one draw, three wins, one loss. So, yeah. That was just a way of for tracking all of our, our information. And this project was really, really minimal. I mean, everything was done inside the, the widget for the most part. So you look at the graph, and essentially what we're doing here is we've we've got a bunch of different variables we've added in, the number of plays, draw amount, player loss, win, all that information here. And when we hit the deal button, what it's doing is it's playing a sound. It does the draw card, which is this lovely monstrosity here. 
and I covered all this in the video of how I was doing all this and I've got um, all 13 different ones and I did 1 through 13 so you got ace through king so whenever you, you do that function of draw a card it's drawing a card for the player and for the bot um, and it's setting card values point values um, and things of that nature very similar kind of setup if you were trying to set up a blackjack if you were setting up a blackjack system you wanted to have a card value system the card point value is being set here so if you have an ace I assign it as 14 because 14 is higher than 13 right so the king is actually 13 and each card has a point value you know the two three four five six seven eight nine ten well they have their own numbers on them so you know what they are so a queen is better than a jack so the queen is 12 points where jack is 11 points but the king is 13 points ace is better so it gets to be 14 if you were setting this same system up to be poker or blackjack then you could change your point system as well now for blackjack you want to have a point value and and that's where it could be really interesting is when you're setting up your ace card your ace card for blackjack or playing to 21 ace is worth one or it's worth 11 <laughs> so you'd have to actually and that's I'm not going to get into the thing about it because we want to take that same um, war card game challenge and bump it up a notch and turn it into the game of blackjack so just keep that in mind is if you're doing this same setup for blackjack for 21 you can't leave these at these values here these would all be 10 jack queen and king would have a value of 10 but the fun's going to be when you draw that ace card it's going to be either a 1 or an 11 so you know that's a big difference if you draw a, a jack and you draw a ace that's 21 or it could be 11 or I'm sorry tw um, yeah 1 plus 10 so it could be 11 so you either got 11 or 21 and that's based on how you play that card but if this is being drawn automatically when you push a button you want our scripting to know that if the ace is drawn then card point value is 1 or it could be 11 figure that one out and if you've got it does it take your your point value over 21 by having it as a 1 or as an 11 figure that math out let that simmer in for a little bit all right ladies and germs I'm done we've bypassed the hour by three minutes I'm showing you that and that or that I'm gonna do that and I'm going to take this guy and I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna say good night it's 530 in the morning and I'm going to bed thanks guys we'll see you around